Sure. I'm very interested in uh, religious and political disagreement, as a lot of people in uh, the field of... Seems, seems to be more and more of that around to, to be interested in. Yeah, I, actually, yeah, I don't know if it's any worse now than it has been at certain times in the past, but it's certainly been as bad as it has been in the last generation or so. So there's, um, there's a very important uh, set of work in social psychology about this on the political side. Um, there's a whole bunch of work on moral in moral foundations theory with people like John Haidt and whatnot. Um, we were inspired by that, a group of researchers and me were inspired by that to try and develop an understanding of disagreement inside religious traditions. So we're talking now about religious ideology rather than political ideology. But religious ideology turns out to be quite similar to the political ideology and moral ideology. So we've been able to benefit tremendously by the existing work uh, in moral foundations theory, social psychology and the rest. Now, uh, what that leads to is an understanding of um, uh, an understanding of why people hold the religious views that they hold. So that, for example, I could speak to a religious opponent, describe to them what their views are in such a way that it would win assent. My religious opponent would say, yep, you've got me. That's exactly what's most important to me. And I could still maintain the disagreement. And this, if the, my religious opponent can do that with me, then we've established understanding-based empathy. It's not hand-holding, heart-to-heart empathy. That's expensive and, and it, it's really, really emotionally costly and it's very difficult to achieve except with particularly well-adjusted people. It's empathy based simply on factual knowledge about the other person. So it's a cheap and, uh, and uh, a socially and energetically and psychologically affordable kind of empathy, which changes the tone of debate in religion. So it's empathy in the sense of just understanding the perspective uh, as opposed to empathy in the sense of actually feeling someone's pain or whatever emotion they're having. Well, hopefully there's a bit of both there. Um, when I'm trying to understand someone I disagree with, uh, uh, I'm tr well, for example, someone who thinks there are supernatural agents. I don't think there are supernatural agents in the world. I don't think there are angels or demons or ghosts or gods. So uh, if I'm talking to someone who does, and I can say not only what they think, but I can express why it's important to them, um, then I'm succeeding in conveying empathy, which has an emotional component to it, because I'm saying why it's important to them, right? It should naturally have a, an emotional component to it, not just an intellectual one. That's actually uh, what comes across when I do this as a practice. People get that message. They, they know that I sympathize with them even though I disagree. So there is an emotional connection. And, and is this, by its nature, a religious or spiritual exercise, according to your terminology? Well, the way I use religion and spirituality is very general, of course. So, uh, yes, from my point of view, sports is spiritual. So, uh, um, yes, of course, it's spiritual. But in, in the general um, way in which it would be implemented by people who think of themselves as conventionally religious, uh, yeah, I would say it, it can take on the form of a spiritual discipline in their narrow sense, right? Try to understand your enemy, not just love your enemy, or at least if you follow Jesus' advice that you're supposed to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, then what that really obliges you to do is to be able to have a conversation with that person where they get, where they can tell that you get them and where they get you. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think people could naturally see it as an extension of their moral obligations as a traditional religious person. Okay. So you have you heard this, this terminological dichotomy, cognitive empathy versus emotional empathy? Does, yeah. It sounds like maybe you're, this thing doesn't exactly map on to that, uh, but it's close. Yeah, it's, it's close. Um, yeah, it maps onto it exactly if the two terms mean this, cognitive empathy if that's understanding-based empathy in the way I've just described it, which mm -hmm. can include emotional components, and affective empathy or the other kind of empathy, if that is the heart-to-heart, hand-holding, Esalen Institute, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> focus encounter group type empathy. Have you uh, ever been to the Esalen Institute? <clears throat> I've uh, been to it to visit, but I've never actually been to a, a session in the Esalen Institute. I actually was recruited to teach a session at the Esalen Institute and talk about something that is not my calling in life. <laughs> <laughs> it was a disaster, but I digress. Um, so, uh, 
Uh, Let's see, just quickly, in what sense is sports spiritual? Mm. You mentioned that. <clears throat> well, um, in my framework, uh, ultimate reality is at the root of everything, out of, of every possibility, of every uh, uh, moral, or with, every, with every possibility that you might realize as a person. So when you strive to realize greatness or goodness or beauty or truth in any of the lines in which we do that in human life, from art to sports, um, you're you're manifesting potential that's written into the structure of nature. And that, to me, is manifesting the character of ultimate reality. So if you want to understand what ultimate reality is, in part, you need to take your guide from excellence, wherever it occurs. Not just the average Joe's game of tennis, but, you know, watching Novak Djokovic play tennis or something. You're realizing possibilities there on the back of a tremendous amount of discipline that man that that are like revelation they show you 